and without getting a drop of pain on anything but the flapping flotsam, what's that? Good morning. Alright guys, listen up. Subscribe or I'll toss you into a volcano. Hello everyone and welcome back to Game Talk, where we talk about games, new and old. And today, my friends, is the last video of the three-part video series. So if you haven't seen the Game Talks on Tekken 1 and Tekken 2, I highly recommend you check them out. You watch them? Good. And I've been wanting to talk about this game for a while now, as this game is extremely special to me. Today, we're going to be covering Tekken 3. And if you say you don't like this game... You're a poopy head. Tekken 3, the first fighting game I've ever played, alongside Street Fighter Alpha 3. Not only was this the first fighting game I've ever played, but this was also one of the first games I've ever played. And if you're worried that this might be a slightly biased review, don't worry, I'll do my best to avoid all bias when possible. Anyway, Tekken 3 was released in arcades one year after the PS1 port of Tekken 2 in 1997. And the PS1 port of Tekken 3 was released one year after that in 1998. This already sounds good because Tekken 2 only had a one year game from the first game and we saw how much that improved upon the first so who the hell knows what Tekken 3 can do to improve upon its predecessor in a larger time gap even higher hopes are going into this review because of the such good reception and impact this game has made not only has Tekken 3 been declared the so-called second best fighting game ever made but if you look for a list of the best fighting games this game will generally be there wow is this game that good I mean I love this game and all but I'm sure there are plenty other better fighting games out there. Or maybe I'm just a fucking shoe, I don't know. But what I do know is just like last time, we need to cover the plot. And unlike last time, it gets better. Are you serious? Of course, it's still a bit stupid, but all of a sudden the plot takes a really dark turn. At the end of the last game, Heihachi defeated Kazuya in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2 final. Heihachi was now well aware of the devil that can overtake Kazuya's body, and to ensure that this devil gene doesn't get passed down anymore, Heihachi threw Kazuya into a pit of a volcano, which is fucking hilarious. Which actually means that Kazuya is dead and is not a playable or fightable character in this game. However, unknown to Heihachi, Kazuya got down and dirty with a woman named Jun Kazama, and she ended up birthing Jin Kazama. Between the events of Tekken 2 and 3, tragic events started occurring. Heihachi, which is a badass old man now, overhears that legendary fighters and martial artists around the world seem to be disappearing and being killed by an ancient being known as Ogre, the god of fighting. Some of these deaths happen to be King and Kuma from the first two Tekkens. Heihachi and his established group of soldiers in the Mishima Zaibotsu known as the Tekken Force seeks out this creature, but to no avail. Jun feels a negative presence and thinks she might be Ogre's next victim. Jun tells Jin that if anything were to happen to her, to seek out his grandfather, Heihachi, which is Jin's only known family. Jun happens to be right, and Jin trying to protect his mother attacked Ogre, but as he was only a teenager, he was knocked unconscious. As Jin came to, he found his house to be burned down and his mother had disappeared. Respecting his mother's wishes, Jin sought out his grandfather and Heihachi took Jin in as his grandson. Jin told him what had happened, and Heihachi now knows that Ogre appears around fighting energy. He trains Jin to learn the Mishima style fighting karate, and 20 years after Tekken 2, the King of Iron Fist Tournament 3 begins to lure out Ogre. Whoever beats Ogre wins the prize money. Damn, the plot went from really over the top and ridiculous to extremely dark all of a sudden. Sure, it's not a masterpiece, but I'm actually interested in it now. But not only has the plot improved, but the FMV intro is really damn good. It starts off by saying, once again, fate brings together those who heed the call. The music also starts building up as we see Heihachi and his Tekken Force soldiers investigating a ruins in Mexico where an apparent sighting of Ogre occurred. And then the bass drops. Now this is a goddamn fighting game intro. Bass pumping music along with the FMV that isn't too bad nowadays. Everything feels like there is so much more oomph to it. This is a perfect G up for a fight. It makes me want to go outside and punch a tree. Speaking of oomph, you can tell this game is going to be intense when you select arcade mode. Oh yeah, the testosterone is pumping, and now I want to headbutt a car. Just like Tekken 2, there are 10 characters to choose right off the bat, and more to unlock as you progress. However, there are a lot of new characters and replacements for other characters. Even with those characters that appeared in the last two look a lot older now due to the 20 year gap in the lore. Some replacements include King, which was a fan of the original King continuing on his legacy, Kuma, the son of the original, Gun Jack, the 30 duration of Jack, Julia Chung, the daughter of Michelle Chung, and Forest Law, the son of Martial Law. Some new characters include Ling Xiaoyu, a girl wanting to build a perfect amusement park in China, Beck Dusan's mentor Huarang, who replaces Beck, Eddie Gordo, a capoeira artist, Mokujin, which is, uh, 
uh, a tree, Brian Fury, a reanimated soldier created by Dr. Abel, a lot of bonus characters which I'll get to later, and the new Bane protagonist and Kazuya's replacement, Jin Kazuma. And there are overall 21 playable characters in total. And that does suck because Tekken 2 had two more. Yeah, they removed some characters like Armor King, Lee Chao Lan, Gunryu, and Wang. Like, come on, I enjoyed playing with my Wang. Okay, now, it's time we talk about the fighting. And holy fucking shit, it's so good. You wanna know something? All the clunkiness, all the input glitches, and all the slightly off physics from Tekken 2 is gone. This is one of the smoothest fighting games I've ever played, and yeah, this was made in the late 90s. If that's not impressive, then I'm Barack Obama himself. Two years, that's it. Two years, and they made a PS1 game have the same smoothness as a PS3 game. I shit you not. Anyone can go back and play this game, and they'll enjoy themselves, period. Tekken 3 is so vibrant and so instant with its mechanics and gameplay that things like air juggling is a breeze now. If you get knocked on the ground, you can get right up and back into gameplay just like that. And extremely flawed mechanics such as the moon jump, while the most hilarious thing in any video game ever and fun to use is now gone. So jumping feels very realistic, and jump attacks can be performed with such ease and flexibility. They have now also fully implemented sidestepping, allowing you to dodge your opponent's attacks and step in and out of the environment. This was in Tekken 2, but I think Kazuya was the only character that had it. But here in Tekken 3, each character can do it. Certain attacks can however only be performed during a sidestep, and with this sidestepping, additional types of throws can now be performed. Throws from each side of the opponent. Attacks can now also be countered with throws. This does require you to have good reflexes, and only a few characters like King, Paul, Nina, and Jin have this ability, but when you achieve it, it's more satisfying than achieving that shortcut on Sewer Speedway in Crash Team Racing. Better yet, doing throws will give more dynamic camera angles, immersing you more into the game. The only way I could describe this game is that it feels so alive. It feels like you're a martial artist brawling it out against other fighters in these environments. Which, yeah, fighting games nowadays tend to do that, but that's the thing. Fighting games nowadays. It is surreal that a 1998 PS1 game achieved this. There are also some small improved details that I love. First, of course, is the improved fight announcer, which makes Tekken 2's announcer out of the fucking job, let me tell you right now. Round 1. Fight. Round one. Fight. You win. win. You win. Chicken. Also, a cool detail is in the next battle loading screen, it has now the pictures of the character instead of just their names. Another small detail I love is the character animations pre-fight. All are distinctively different from each other, and there are two per character. What you can also do is during the victory replay, you can hold down circle and your chosen character will perform a secret victory animation. I love extra character detail in games, and that makes me moist. All these details plus the way ahead of its time fighting mechanics makes me not surprised in the slightest that people would rank this game so high in terms of fighting games. Just like that time I wasn't surprised when my uncle touch me, but that's for a later date. Just like from Tekken 1 to Tekken 2, they've increased the move count for the characters. And with Kazuya not being in the game, Jin, his replacement, not only has pretty much all of Kazuya's moves, but a whole lot of Jun Kazama's moves and attacks implemented as well. This gives a lot more diversity to Jin's moveset. But the two movesets I really want to go over is Dancing Man and Tree, or just Eddie and Mokujin. First off, Mokujin, which literally translates to wooden person in Japanese. Thank you, Namco. Very creative. While he actually does not have a specific move moveset, he is my favourite to play as, as each round, he will mimic a random character's moveset. Eddie, however, fucking Eddie. I'm telling you right now, whoever thought of Eddie as a character needs to win the fucking Nobel Prize. I mentioned before that Eddie was a capoeira artist. Do you know what capoeira is? Motherfucking breakdance fighting. My god, Namco are geniuses. And you're probably thinking that this moveset's gonna be hard to learn. Well, you're wrong, it's actually pretty easy to learn, and look at this. This character is crazy. There is a specific mood with Eddie that my brother used to spam with Eddie when we were younger called the War. Walk. Well, he called it the walk. It's not actually called that, but here it is. Round two, fight. <laughs> What a unique name. First calling Entrance in Crash Nitro Kart Pink Dick, and calling this The Walk. Once again, very creative. Don't get me wrong though, this isn't a perfect game. There is no such thing as that. Well, except Garfield Kart, of course. I'll go over issues now, and most of these issues come from Arcade Mode. Arcade Mode is again, basically identical, but with some changes. There are 10 stages with a sub-boss, but there is only one sub-boss this time, and that's Heihachi on stage 9. And can we admit that he's harder than the actual final boss? Yeah, there's no sub-boss depending on your chosen character. This is really upsetting because something that Tekken 2 exceeded in was forcing you to play through arcade mode with the 10 set characters at the start. And as you completed arcade mode, you would unlock the sub-boss you defeated on stage 8. To unlock characters in this game, it just depends on how many times you complete arcade mode. And I have tested it, and yes, you can't unlock more characters if you complete arcade mode with the same character more than once. So there is still some forcing of other characters. That does truly suck because that was a great touch in Tekken 2. Something else I don't like that isn't really a big issue is the stage settings. They're great, don't get me wrong. 
but they're repeated. Yes, each character has their own stage you'll verse them in, but most stages will home multiple characters. And yeah, the music is different for each one, but there was way more variety with Tekken 2. At least as you unlock characters, you are able to face them in arcade mode as they're not sub bosses. So there's more variety with that, I guess. Stage 10, you'll verse the final boss, Ogre. Oh, hello there. Ogre is tough, but for some reason, nowhere near as tough as Heihachi in stage 9, which I find quite odd. I found Devil in Tekken 2 to be a much more menacing and difficult boss. Something else I find weird about Ogre is that when you unlock him and get to the final boss stage, you'll verse Ogre. Like, come on, Tekken 1 did better than that, and you know how I feel about that game. <laughs> In Tekken 1, if you played as the final boss Heihachi, in stage 9, you'll verse Kazuya. In Tekken 2, if you played as Devil, on stage 10, you'll verse Angel. But in Tekken 3, if you play as Ogre, you'll verse Ogre. That seems kinda lazy. And as you beat Ogre on round 1, he will use Heihachi's power to morph into his final form, True Ogre. Damn, that's a menacing boss design and the fucker can breathe fire, but man is he easy. It's a weird downgrade that I want to explain why this was done, but honestly I can't. But something that I do really like about Ogre is since he's the god of fighting, his moveset consists of pretty much all the sub-bosses from Tekken 2. That is a nice touch. And once again, beating arcade mode will show your character's FMV ending. They aren't as cringy this time, and some are quite dark, but most are hilarious. And again, there is only one canon ending which gets really dark, Jin's ending. In the lore, Jin was ready to face Ogre. Ogre appeared before Jin and something snapped inside of him. Seeing his mother's supposed killer, Jin used all his strength and learnings from Heihachi to kill Ogre. This shocked Heihachi as that power he saw in Jin reminded him of Kazuya, and thought the devil Jin might have been passed down. Heihachi Heihachi ordered his Tekken 4 soldiers to open fire on Jin. He attempted to get back on his feet, but was shot straight in the head by his grandfather. Heihachi, however, was correct. Kazuya did pass down his devil Jin, and as he turned around, Heihachi saw a demonic version of his grandson before he got attacked by it. Jin flew away, and the devil Jin is loose once again. Jin then had no recollection of what just happened. Also, that character, later known as Devil Jin, made his debut as a playable character in Tekken 5. And you're probably not satisfied. You're probably asking, shouldn't someone been thrown off a high ledge or a cliff? Don't worry, in Heihachi's non-canon ending, Okay, how does this game look compared to Tekken 2? Better, but not extremely better, but better. And of course it would look better. The character models have more polygons, the environments are detailed better, and hell, this game was made two years after Tekken 2. And look, the characters actually blink now. Of course there's improvements from the visual department, there's no question there. But how does this game sound? We know that the first two games in the series sounded marvelous, and the soundtrack was way ahead of their time, but Tekken 3's soundtrack is good. I would say the best soundtrack in the three, both in the arcade and the remix PS1 versions of the soundtrack. And by now, it's traditional that I'll show you a few examples. But then again, look up the whole soundtrack and do things to it. See, while I like this soundtrack more, a downside to it is it's not as atmospheric as Tekken 2's soundtrack with its stages. But to me, this one is catchier and way more memorable. There are also, just like Tekken 2, other modes to choose from. You've got the returning survival, practice, and team battle mode. But when you complete arcade mode as True Ogre, you unlock Tekken Ball mode. This mode is amazing. How do you make Tekken 3 better? Add fucking volleyball. This could be its own game and I'd still play it. This mode is probably even more addictive than team battle mode. And if you defeat a certain character named Gon, you will unlock him in arcade mode and all the other modes. Gon is a small dinosaur, which was actually a one-time licensed character from a manga. His gameplay is absolutely ridiculous and he's nothing more than just a bonus character. There is one more new mode though, Tekken Force mode. Now this is... Epic. Epic. I felt really uncomfortable saying that word. This is a side-scrolling beat-em-up minigame which you fight Tekken 4 soldiers until you verse the boss of that stage, which will change depending on your chosen character. You can also find chicken on the floor which will grant you a health boost, accompanied by the best line in voice acting history. Chicken. Nah, who am I kidding? We all know what the best line in voice acting history is. That was too close. 
You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. And there are four stages. The Backstreets, Badlands, Darkness, and Mishima Fortress. While this game mode is pretty cool, it is flawed. The main issue is perspective. The camera doesn't change depending on your perspective like it normally does. So it gets a bit awkward in some situations. Next is the AI targeting issues. Only two Tekken 4 soldiers can spawn in at once. So sometimes when you defeat one and the other spawns in, the game gets confused and suddenly automatically shifts to another target, causing you to get attacked by the closest target. And there are also automatic stun locks you can get yourself into as well. This game mode is fun, but it does get tedious at times. But there is more to it. When you complete all stages, you will get a key. And finishing it again with another character will give you another key. So once you have all three keys and beat it again, you will go to the secret fifth stage, Underground, where you will verse a previously mentioned character in the lore, Dr. Boskonovich. Or as the Tekken 3 announcer says, Boskonovich. This stage is difficult, but spam low attacks with Heihachi and you'll be just fine. Upon beating him, it will say, Wait, what? I've saved Dr. Boskanovich. Didn't I just beat the living piss out of him? Um... What? You'll then unlock Dr. Boskanovich as a playable character. And he... Is the best fighting game character ever. Look at this boy's moveset. It's absolutely mental. I don't even know what the hell's going on half the time. Am I playing Tekken or is this some sort of drug trip? Alrighty. Does Tekken 3... Hold up today. <laughs> what a stupid question. Of course it does. Like I said, it's a PS1 game that feels like a PS3 game, but at the end of the day, it isn't perfect. It is such a shame that certain aspects such as the arcade mode lacked in quality from the last game. There's no specific character sub-bosses, lacking difficulty for the final boss, repeating character stages, and overall these aspects weren't as good as Tekken 2. But the fighting, in-game mechanics, moves to perform, character variety, and new modes just completely exceed the quality from its predecessor. This game is is straight out addictive. There is so much stuff to do with the regular and bonus modes, and the game is hard just like the last, but I feel like for the final boss could have been a lot tougher. However, this game is the ideal Tekken game to start off on. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Anyone can pick up this game nowadays, even if they've never played Tekken before, and have a good time. Nevertheless though, Tekken 3 makes the good list, and gets an 8.5 out of 10. You don't know how tempted I was to give this game a 9, but there are some inexcusable issues. In the end, Tekken 3 is undoubtedly the best game of the original Tekken trilogy, and honestly, the best fighting game of the 90s. This game is a classic, but I feel like nowadays there are better fighting games that the gaming market has to offer. To name an example from another IP, Mortal Kombat 9 was pretty damn good, but I haven't played that in a long time. And even other entries to the Tekken series like Tekken 5 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2, I feel like they are vastly superior to Tekken 3. But since this is the last video of the Tekken trilogy, I wanted to end this video off by talking about the empire that is Tekken. From Tekken 3, the series took off and became one of the most respected fighting game franchises out there. Mainline entries like Tekken 4, 5, 6, and 7 plowed through as the series continued. Spin-offs like the Tag Tournament series, which some will argue are better than the mainline entries, and other shit like the live-action movies and Tekken Blood Vengeance, which was the funniest movie I've ever seen, put it that way. And it's not even a comedy. And even more stuff such as the East Sports in Tekken, which is currently at its biggest. This powerhouse of a series is continuing to expand and is showing no signs of stopping. And even if you prefer the likes of Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, you can only respect the dedication and effort Namco has put into their series. And you can only respect the amount of influence that Tekken has brought to the fighting game genre. But when it comes to the three next mainline entries to the series or the tag tournament spin offs, I'll cover them at a later date. But for now, I'm all Tekken out. But for the meantime, eat ass. Well everyone, that concludes the trilogy of Game Talk episodes on the PS1 Tekken trilogy. I hope you guys enjoyed. Slap a like on the video to let me know that you did enjoy. If you haven't already, subscribe with those notifications turned on to see my future uploads. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you before you know it. See you later.